On our morning show, Steve Colstead joins us. He's been a busy fellow here lately. Uh, how did how the fair go for the Richland Center, Kiwanis? Actually, the fair went really well, uh, um, Phil. It, um, you know, we had a lot of people who came to our stand. Uh, it was a profitable year. I thought the fair went really good. Uh, you know, the some of the exhibits were down, especially some of the dairy exhibits because of, uh, of um, some of the diseases that are out there that... Uh, um, they had to face, but uh, I think everything and and the spirits of people were really up. It's so you know, a fair brings out a lot of the good side of a community, and people get to see each other, uh, reminisce, um, enjoy their company, and take in the sights. Um, I think that's kind of what fairs are all about. Those are the community get-togethers that come once a year and people take a part of them, that type of thing. So we saw a lot of faces at our food stand that we've seen over the years. And, you know, we you know, actually um, sold a lot of product. And I think the best stuff is when you get all these volunteer workers in this closed area of a food stand and they start talking and reminiscing and, you know, they just have a lot of fun giving away food. And uh, I shouldn't say giving away, but we try and keep our prices so that a family can actually uh, actually feed their, uh, their family with our prices. But, you know, I think because the Kiwanis Club serves the youth in the community and families in the community, we like to keep the prices to the point where people can come and eat. A lot of hours, though, Phil. I'd mm-hmm. have to say that because we're a small club, you know, a few of us have to put a few hours in to get it ready and a few more hours just to make sure we're there if people have a lot of questions. Uh, but um, as I've always told my children, you can just do anything for a short period of time. And that's kind of thing where, where most people who work down at the fairgrounds during the fair are at. They put in some long hours. They enjoy the company, the people. And, um, you know, they take in the sights from the standpoint of the people coming back and chatting with them. I knew you were busy because, uh, yeah, you weren't even, you couldn't even give me a hard time. You were back there frying cheese curds or doing something when oh, I was there. So. Yeah, it, it's either that or I was there early in the morning when Premier had their breakfast for, uh, for mm-hmm. the exhibitors. And um, we had our breakfast on Sunday morning. So I was there at 4 o'clock in the morning getting those things ready to go. And, and uh, yeah, it it's one of those things where sometimes you're really, really busy and other times you get to socialize some, but you know, such as a food stand at the uh, local county fair. So is that one of the major fundraisers for the Kiwanis during uh, the year, Steve? Uh, actually, it's one of them. Uh, we we have a couple of uh, pancake suppers that play major roles in, uh, uh, in our fundraising, and then we have a food stand open at the rodeo. Um, but we're having a, a pancake supper, one of our major fundraisers, coming up on October 2nd. It's going to run the same as all of our food stands do. It's going to run from 5 until, or our pancake supper's 5 till 7 at night. It'll be at the Richland Center Community Center. It'll be pancake sausage, um, apple uh, sauce, and, and uh, warm cherries, uh, the same as we normally do. All the pancakes you can eat, fried right in front of you. And it's a fundraiser for Coats for Kids. Uh, the last one we had, which was in July, was the uh, backpack program, which is a major fundraiser and one of our major projects. And the Coats for Kids program is too. We generally donate someplace between 125 and 170 coats to kids in need in our community through the through the Coats for Kids program. And this is one of those major sources of money for that particular program. We always take a goodwill offering because we really don't want anybody to be turned away. You know, if um, you know somebody comes and they only have a few dollars, uh, or even if they don't have any money, you know, they go through the line and get fed. And I think that's the other thing that's really important about a pancake supper. And, and it doesn't matter if we hold it or a different organization. You know, it's the social portion of it, sitting down for a meal and talking to somebody maybe you haven't seen in a few weeks or months or whatever and enjoying their company and uh, enjoying the food um, in, a, in a, a place where there's a lot of room and you have a lot of space to sit and uh, you can just really enjoy their company. 
And so that's what we're really offering with this pancake um, supper is um, pancakes, sausages, uh, some applesauce, a beverage, but then the opportunity to sit down and enjoy someone else's company. And we're at we're seeing a goodwill offering because obviously, um, you know, we want people to come and, and enjoy the company. And we're not going to put a limitation on that by saying it's a certain price or not. Tell me about the Coats for Kids project then, Steve. Uh, the, the wheels are kind of turning for that for another well, year? We've run, we've run the Coats for Kids projects actually for about 15 years now. In the old days, what it amounts to is we would use the Church of the Nazarene meeting hall, and we would set the coats up, and people would gather in a line, and um, they would give us their sizes. We'd hand it off to someone else inside, and then they would go in, and, and the kids would actually try the coats on and, and take them out the door. And then COVID struck. And so there wasn't any physical contact. We couldn't have any physical contact. So what we decided to do is work through health and social services and um, have them as the outlet for uh, the Coats for Kids. So what we will do is uh, a lot of their clients are in needs of Coats. So health and social services gives us a list of their clients and what they need. Uh, And then people will call in to health and social services and ask, is there an outlet for coats? Can we get a a coat? We're really in need. Then I get that particular number and I call them back, ask what sizes they need. I put them into a, um, um, a bag, take them back down to health and social services. And then they, um, the people who want to receive the coats just come there and pick their coats up. So it takes me out of the middle of uh, actually meeting the people face to face, but it also gives them a safe place to pick the coats up. So we're still in a point where people, if they're in need of having coats, they have a place to get them, which is our particular program. But it also puts in a, um, a place to pick them up that wouldn't be at somebody's personal house or something like that. And are they all new coats, Steve? They're all new coats. Mm -hmm. You know, we we went through the process of providing new coats rather than used coats um, because it's, you know, it's so much easier to handle. And surprisingly, um, you know, the um, um, uh, Wallace Cooper and Elliot has been a partner with us for a really, really long time. And most of the coats that they receive anymore coming in um, are brand new coats, brand okay. new coats. A lot of different variety and sizes, uh, you know, that type of thing. We have a budget for our club for a certain amount of money, and that's what this fundraiser is about, just in case we have those coats that may we may not have on hand. You know, I'm really surprised. You know, I, uh, I wear a double X coat, um, Phil, but, uh, you know, some of the students that we give to the high school are in that 4X area, which, um, you know, is those are the ones we have to go out and purchase. Mm -hmm. Larger coats, you know, adult-sized coats that we generally don't have on hand. But we have a source, you know, that we go and and get a really sweet deal on them. But we try and provide um, the coats that the people actually need based on the uh, sizes they give us. So if somebody's listening and they know of a child or they have a child that needs a coat, uh, it's best to go through Health and Human Services then? Oh, give them a call, and then what they'll do is call me if they're not a client of theirs, that type of thing. We also work through the school districts. Okay. If they see students that are there and they need a coat, they'll give us a call, and we'll provide them with coats too. So we, we try and work with the groups and agencies that are closest to the kids. Okay. And uh, so we've we provided coats for Richland Center and Ithaca and Riverdale in the past just by phone calls of, of uh, either principals or, stu- or uh, of teachers that have known some need in their particular uh, classrooms. If someone comes to the Pancake Supper on the 4th and uh, they want to give to the cause, write a check, uh, and specify that it goes directly there, or do all proceeds that night go to... All pro- proceeds that night are going to go to Coats okay. for Kids. But we have a lot of people who 
actually donate directly to the club for Coats for Kids. And what they'd make the check out to is the Richland Center Kiwanis Club. And down in the footnote, put down Coats for Kids. Okay. That's simple enough. Anything else you'd like to add today, Steve? No, I just encourage the community to come out and support the uh, the um, Richland Center Kiwanis Club and the efforts that we do, and especially the kids in the community, because the motto of, um, of a Kiwanis Club, every Kiwanis Club, is that we serve the kids in our community, which also means that we serve the families of the communities, too. And that's, uh, that's one of the things when we get a lot of projects that come through that people want us to fund. We look really closely at how does it affect families and kids. And so that's kind of where we're at. So this one is um, aimed, again, at uh, the Coast for Kids program, which will be run later on this fall. Uh, and it'll be used to uh, purchase um, coats for kids that uh, we need to put uh, coats on. And the very final thing, if you come out, it's a goodwill offering. This is an opportunity to bring 15 of your famous cousins out and you know, <laughs> throw a few bucks in and just act like you have a lot of money and uh, feed them all. And we'll we'll never run out of pancakes. We yeah. just will never run out of pancakes. You've cooked a lot of pancakes over the years. Uh, we have. You know, <laughs> if, if we had a nickel for every pancake that I've tossed, Phil, we wouldn't even have this program. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. <laughs> Everybody would have a coat. Right? We would. Yeah. yeah. All right. Steve, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you so much for having me, Phil. Yeah, appreciate all you do. And Kiwanis, too. And uh, that's uh, it for this subject on the morning show today.